Hi, I'm Phil, and this is my shop. Since last fall, I've been thinking about and working on my drill press. Now it's a late 60s Rockwell 15-017, which doesn't really mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but it's a vintage tool, and I've come to rely on a drill press in my shop as one of the key shop machines. You know, those stationary tools that you use for a lot of things. The other one is the bandsaw over there. Now, I've kind of felt like my relationship with my drill press is I really want it to turn on when I push the button and to drill holes the way it needs to. But, and again, starting last fall, I just felt like this drill press was capable of so much more. That it sounded really loud. Uh, when I took the belt off the motor, I rotated it and it made kind of a squeaking noise. And I didn't really like that. It felt like there was a lot of vibration. The belt wobbled when it was in use. And it just seemed like this could be a tool that could be a really precise, smooth running shop machine. Now I wasn't in the market to do a whole strip down, repaint, whatever kind of restoration. I just want this to be a decent looking, high performing machine. So if I could remove as much vibration and noise from it as I could, then so much the better. And just recently, I have the last two items checked off the list that bring this up to the tool where I want it to be. So I wanna talk a little bit about some of the things that I did. Now, first of all, as I mentioned, that motor was really squeaky to me. So uh, after some consultation with Chris and Logan, I thought that the easiest course of action and the first one to try being the least invasive was to just run some lubrication down the shaft in the motor into the bearings. Now the bottom bearing is a little tough to get to, but I feel like that's not the one that takes the most strain. It's the upper one where the belt is pulling on it. So I dripped some oil down in there and let it soak a good day, day and a half. And I repeated that process a couple of times. And as a result now, the motor sounds a lot quieter. So just check this out. Yeah, and there's a lot less vibration in the whole tool as well. So that when I'm lining up a drill bit and dropping that bit into the workpiece, it is gonna line up exactly where I want it. And I don't feel like I'm gonna uh, have to make approximations on its accuracy. The other thing I did is I adjusted the motor tension. There was a, a bolt at the back of the machine here that I can show you uh, and a spring that's on the inside that controls that. Uh, I lubricated that, replaced it with a thumb screw as it was on the original. And then I also actually removed one of the links from the link belt in my uh, motor up here so that now it's a much smoother running uh, tool. I actually started by removing several of the links from there and realized that it was too short. So just with one made a big difference on how that worked. Uh, the other thing that I did is on the depth stop column here, I'll show some B-roll of that, is one thing that this drill press did not have was a way to lock the quill in a lowered position. So I found some brass bar stock and had to order a special tap for it and made a new stop nut that I could put at the bottom there so that when I'm using, say, a sanding drum or the belt sander attachment that I have for this, I can keep that quill in its position. Added a couple of leather washers, especially right here between the two stop nuts, and that's going to keep those uh, nuts, when I set them in a depth position, from vibrating and wiggling free and changing that setting. Over on the other side, a little bit more B-roll that I'll stick in, is that I added a spring to the uh, quill return. Because previously when I got this from a coworker, it didn't have a spring. At the time, he said they weren't really all that available. Well, with the wonders of the internet now, I was able to find and install a new coil spring from the inside. So now the quill travels up and down just the way that it should and it's a much nicer machine to use because of that. It's a small detail, but it's one that makes a big difference. Um, 
Also on the other side, I added a, a bit rack. It was something that I saw and was inspired by old metalworking lathes where they have a big tool panel that's kind of on an angle where you can put all your different collets and whatnot on there. And I just thought that would be a great place to store all of my drill press specific bits, forstners, some countersinks, sanding drums, that kind of thing. So I've really found it pretty handy to have, even though it can be a little bit of a dust collector. Uh, the final thing and that one of the other items that I was waiting to cross off the list was I had a magnet made for the other side to create a speed chart so that I know exactly what the speed is on my drill press setting, depending on where the belt is on the pulleys on the inside. It's a fun little drawing that I had an uh, artist do, and she did a fantastic job for it. So the last item is that came just in the mail the other day is this cute little guy. It's a Yankee number 991 toolmaker's vise, or sometimes called a drill press vise. This little guy's only an inch and a half wide and I can open the jaws up about, I don't know, inch and three quarters. And it came with a little block with grooves and slots in it for holding on to round pieces or odd shaped parts. Now it's one of those things that it's not a necessity at the drill press, but I've done enough woodworking to know that I do enough metalworking in my pursuit of this hobby that it's nice to have something dedicated to hold on to those small pieces, grip them securely so that I can make safe and accurate cuts. So that's the story of my drill press. It's up and running and is in great shape now. And it's one of those tools that I find so many more uses for than simply drilling holes. So I hope you enjoyed this and we'll check you next time here in my shop.